Welcome to Europe ECR 2023. My name is uh, Martin Gillard. I am an interventional cardiologist from France. And it's a pleasure for me uh, to receive uh, VJ Canadian from uh, Newcastle uh, in UK. So VJ, I think there is an important point. It is a patient who have a coronary artery disease and aortic stenosis. And as you know, now we are treating patients with a low risk, so it's a, with patients with a very long life expectancy, better. And uh, the, the problem of the coronary artery, artery disease is very, very important. So could you explain um, what is the evidence for doing a, 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 a revascularization, a PCI, uh, for this patient who have a stable coronary artery disease and also uh, severe aortic stenosis. Thank you very much, Professor Jalal. Thank you. It's, it's really my pleasure to be here discussing this very important topic. Uh, in response to your question on who should be doing uh, revascularization in patients with severe aortic stenosis, the bottom line is that we do not have very many evidence. You know, just like how we have in CCS, it's constantly changing. But there are small studies in the UK. There was a study called as the activation trial. Just over 250 patients or less were randomized into PCI versus no PCI. But these patient cohort, we must remember, many did not have clear cut evidence of angina in terms of coronary artery complexity, though it was a low risk patient. And what that study showed was that uh, there was no difference in terms of all-cause mortality, whether you perform PCI in these patients or not. But one key thing that we learned, and, and I, for me it's an important message, is that the patient that underwent PCI actually had higher risk of bleeding, and the, and the Kaplan-Meier curve was that wide. Okay, exactly. So that we, mu we must take into consideration, particularly given the fact that majority of our patients are older, they are frail, they are comorbid, and they are high bleeding risk patients. And of course, of late, we have recently published the EAPCI consensus document, and that also ex exactly explains the same thing. There is no current evidence, but we need to be selective in terms of who we do that. Which are the patients we might consider doing uh, intervention? These are the high risk. If, if there is a severe left main stenosis, severe proximal right coronary artery lesion, severe LAD lesion, and we know that inevitably that is going to be contributing to the symptoms that these patients have. So they might be the ones that we, we will have to think about uh, performing PCI on. And um, in this world where the CT takes a, a, a better place, a great place now for evaluating our patient, so for, for you, is the CT a place before, uh, before uh, TAVI for, this, uh, for exploring this patient or is the angiography, the invasive angiography, is always mandatory for this, uh, for this patient? Yeah, definitely. The, the, the latest ESC guidelines on valvular heart disease uh, suggest a level class 1 and level C evidence of performing coronary angiography in patients uh, undergoing valvular interventions, either surgical or percutaneous. But of course, um, CT has a role, and CT is literally has taken off in the last few years because of several studies. And in older people, they already have CT for the evaluation of aortic stenosis. But the problem with coronary disease is that they have a lot of calcified arteries already. So personally, for myself, performing CT for the evaluation of older patients with coronary artery disease, we are not quite there yet. So I would be performing uh, coronary angio, literally takes five five, ten minutes performing from the radial artery far away from where we'll be doing the femoral intervention. But I would consider CT for younger people. Uh, we're, we're now expanding the, uh, the indication for TAVI to low risk, intermediate risk. So those patients, we can just save a bit of contrast while they're having the CT evaluation of aortic valve, they can also have evaluation of the coronary arteries as well. So I think it's, uh, it's a very important when you an analyze a CT before to see if there is or not calcification of the, artics, of the uh, coronary artery disease for this young patient. And if there is no, perhaps it's, it will be sufficient for low patient. What do you think about just CT? Because CT is, is mandatory. Yes. Uh, it's a keystone of the, of the evaluation of the artic stenosis patient. So yeah. perhaps... Um, no, you think no, it's... No, 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 absolutely. Yeah. For me, I, I like whether it's a simple angiography, simple intervention. There's nothing such a thing called simple, but regardless, 
planning is such a key thing. Mm. So you need to know, regardless of what intervention you're doing on the valves, what about the other structures, in particular coronary artery disease, because if you're unaware, if you're caught unaware, while you're doing a TAVI intervention, find a left main PCI, and a lot of things can go wrong. So having an understanding, either through invasive coronary angiography or CT intervention, is absolutely vital in my view. Yes. Do, would you agree with that yeah, too? Completely, yeah, completely, completely. Yeah. Yeah. And also the, the last question for me, which is very important, it's when perform PCI. We mm. decided to perform PCI or not, perhaps, but yeah. If you decided it's before, yeah. during, yeah. after. Yeah. <clears throat> so chronic coronary syndrome setting, there's always buy-in time. Acute coronary syndrome, absolutely no question whatsoever. Even without the setting of aortic stenosis, a number of studies are saying we can get away with medical therapy because the medical therapy is so powerful. But again, when people have aortic stenosis and have coronary disease, the physiology changes. So there could be a contributory factor coming from severe disease, as I mentioned, severe left main, severe osteal right coronary artery, severe or proximal LAD can contribute to the problem uh, that is already caused by aortic stenosis as such. Again, as we just discussed, planning, looking at the coronary artery, and, and there are some registry studies that suggest when people have high syntax scores, high complex disease, it's best to perform them before performing the TAVI because you have a bit more uh, room for your hemodynamics while you're actually doing the TAVI intervention. And also there's time to give them the dual antiplatelet therapy, stop the second antiplatelet so you're focusing primarily on the groin for your intervention on the day. And during intervention, there are some people, a lot of our patients, we saw on a case during our session, 95 year old. They really cannot afford to keep coming back and forth to the hospital. And the relatives themselves would come and say, actually, can you do them all together? So it's, there is a necessity to plan things at the, at the time of the, of the PCI as well. And I wouldn't take on those cases, even if people are requesting, if it is a simple, straightforward case that you can do you know, very quickly and then move on to your TAVI intervention and is not going to affect your TAVI intervention, excess contrast load, excess procedural time, et cetera. So that happens very rare, you know, less than 10 percentage of cases where we do it yeah, dur yes. uh, during TAVI. But there are also other cases when we sometimes do after. What do you think about that, yes, Martine? I think it, it will be better to have uh, to do it after because of the physiology. Because the physiology is very, very difficult to perform with uh, aortic stenosis. So we, we treat the aortic stenosis and then we can explore the patient. Yeah. So for me, it will be very clear and I think uh, um, it's an important point. Important, important yes. But uh, I think you, you, you summarize everything very well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. My pleasure.